Good time of day, guys! My name is Godzi, and welcome back to another episode of Higurashi When They Cry, Chapter 8, Matsure Bayashi. Last episode, Mion beat the living piss out of Okanogi, and Takano started running away after Okanogi told her to, uh, no to your god herself. So, yeah, I don't know if we're in the finale now, if this is the last episode or what, or if next episode will be. But we're, we've got to be, like, stupid dummy close to the end at this point. So, yeah. And if you hear my dog barking in the background, I'm sorry. But, I, uh, <laughs> she's her own living thing. I can't control her. No one can. My dad wants to, which is weird of him. Anyways, let's read. I cried again, and then noticed someone standing nearby. Uh-oh. Hello. It's the girl. The girl whom I met when I came to Hinamizawa when the Irei Institute was up first opened. I met this girl at the shrine when I declared war on God. This girl is the god of this place. That god looked at me and sneered, rather than sympathizing. Are you still trying to take God's place? Do you still deny that you're human, child of man? Long time no see. I lost. I lost this game. This is what I get for challenging God, I guess. Child of man, are you still after the position of a god? Are you still willing to endure for the sake of opposing the divine? No way. Taking a god's place really is impossible. Child of man, listen well. I will show you the way to godhood. Huh? With the gun in your right hand, and your life. The position of a god requires no flesh. Don't expect people to recognize your existence. Being a god is lonesome. You, foolish child of man, wanted to become one. Is that still what you desire? Are you telling me to shoot myself with this? <laughs> That's it. Something that simple would make me a god. That's so simple. Then, what is this? What have I been doing all this time? You shouldered the sins of many others. You purified all their sins by sacrificing yourself. Your courage will be praised, and you'll be allowed to take a seat among the gods. What's that? You're telling me to be their scapegoat? To take responsibility for all of them and die? Fuck you! I refuse! I absolutely refuse! Damn, this chapter, it's dropped three F-bombs in the last, like, two hours. Crazy. Why don't you want that? To attain peace in the human world, there must always be one sacrifice for one sin. Isn't that the truth of the human world? Isn't that the method for purifying sin? Didn't you want to sacrifice one girl for the future you desired? What are you talking about? I don't understand anything you're saying! You don't, because you are a human. You don't even know how stupid you were to even want to become a god. I do. I don't want to die for other people to become a god. No way. I don't want to become a god at all. I am fine with being human. I just wanted someone to forgive me for being that way. That's all. But, but, why is this happening? Then how will you purify this stain? How will you pay the price? Why? Why does someone have to take the blame? They're all pushing responsibility onto other people! They maneuver this way and that, just so they don't have to dirty their own hands! Is that just what happens in the human world? No, that's not... Because when my parents and my grandpa were alive, things like that didn't happen. We were all happy. Nobody blamed anyone else! How did I fall out of that world? Why am I wandering around in the mountains alone in the rain? Why... 
by me. Oh, this is the punishment for my sins, isn't it? I knew it. I had noticed it. I made a huge mistake, but I didn't want to admit it. And when it was too late, I regretted it for the first time. So this is the punishment for my sins. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> the human world will want you to purify your sins. They'll be purified when you sacrifice yourself. That's the way of the human world. However, I am not a human. I am a being above man. A being which fills in the missing gaps in harmony. A being that forgives human sins. Man cannot forgive the sins of man. I am the one who forgives the sins of the children of men. Okay. <laughs> I forgive you. Demanding a sacrifice be paid for sins isn't the way of the human world. It's the way of demons. So this is not the world of man. This is a world of demons. Created by man and the demons infesting them. Humans cannot end that way of their world. So I became a god to grant that end. It was over a thousand years of pain. I wanted to come down from this place. I desired a world where God doesn't need to make peace. And finally, after a thousand years' time, I have found that fragment. Come, child of man. I will forgive your sins in my name. Kneel and repent. Ask for forgiveness. Then you shall receive it. God will forgive you. God will forgive your human sins. The god in the form of a little girl walked up to me and reached out. As I knelt and looked down, she touched my head. Wouldn't it be crazy if the credits rolled? <laughs> They're not gonna, because I know there's more. <laughs> Hanyu! Hanyu! Where are you? Hanyu chan! Answer if you can hear us! I heard voices in the distance. And then, I saw a girl standing in front of me. She's one of Mion's club members, my most hated enemies. Shit. She's found me. The rain had already ceased. I decided to come out of the hollow tree. After the rain, it had grown so humid I was starting to sweat all over. I'm soaked in sweat, mud, and rain. I feel filthy. I've been bitten by mosquitoes, and my body is itching all over. Ah, this is why I hate the mountains. Don't say a word. I pointed the gun at her. The girl just looked at me calmly as if she didn't see it. At the very least, she did follow my order. What should I do? Should I take her as my hostage? I only have one bullet. How long can I keep running for? Han you! Where are you? Damn, she really is lost. Ah, there she is! Han you, son! Han you, where have you. Ah! I really am unlucky to the end. Or maybe you could call this a kind of luck. At the end of it all, I managed to get some vengeance. Oh, <laughs> CG. Do you know what this is? It's a gun. <laughs> Perfect. Don't you dare move. <laughs> the tables have turned now. Damn it. Why now? Mionchan, if you don't want anyone else to get shot, step forward. No, don't do it, Mi-chan! Mion stepped forward quietly. She certainly has a lot of courage. No wonder she's their leader. Thanks to you, I've been ruined. 
Some scurry men on the mountain want me dead. They won't forgive me. But I can't just go out like that. At the very least, I want some revenge. <laughs> Wait, I just realized. This is the outfit where Mion's supposed to have her gun, right? Does she... Or is that her school uniform? I don't know. I... Mion usually has a gun, but she doesn't right now, so that's weird. Huh. I know you only have one bullet in that gun. That's right. But that one bullet could kill Mion chan couldn't it? Takano! Are you going to shoot her? Don't move! If you do, I really might just fire this gun. <laughs> Don't any of you move. Just stay behind me. How courageous. Is this some spirit of self-sacrifice? Rather be shot yourself than letting your friends be shot. Well, it's not that easy to kill someone with just one shot. Of course, it depends on where you hit, though. I'm surprised. How can you be so brave? You want me to shoot you for all the others? Just so you know, if you think that I'll hesitate to shoot because they'll rush over here once they hear it, you're sadly mistaken. <laughs> Go ahead, shoot me. But after you do, my friends will rip you to pieces. <laughs> Let them try. They say you too, you dig two holes when you curse another. Going down along with the great commander who made Okanogi surrender wouldn't be so bad. Go ahead and shoot me. But make sure that it's me you hit. If you shoot anyone else, I'll put you through hell! Oh my, I'm shaking. <laughs> no, don't me, Chan! Takano-san is serious. She really will shoot you. Some... Somehow, we'll have to buy some time. Someone from the Bloodhounds will come by for sure. I'm sure they will. But I'll shoot before I lose my chance. Let's see, where should I hit her? I'm not good at this, so forgive me for not being able to aim that well. <laughs> me... You aren't serious, are you? Don't anyone move. I'm the leader of this club. If I can protect you all, I'll be satisfied with that. If I don't make it... <laughs> set up a shrine inside of my locker and pray for me there. You'll be taking over my position, Kei-chan. Help him out, okay? Mion is prepared to die. I'm already cornered. I won't accept any words of negotiation. Mion understands that. She doesn't want anyone else to be killed. That was why she chose to be a shield for her friends. That was an easy decision to make for her. Because none of her friends would end up hurt. If she ends up just getting injured, that would be a stroke of luck as far as she's concerned. Even if she doesn't make it, she thinks that's far better than seeing any of her friends die. And that's why Takana will shoot. Even though she understands Mion's noble intentions painfully well, it's too visceral for her to accept. So she'll shoot. I will pull the trigger! With all the absurdities of the human world riding on that bullet, I will shoot her! And now we've changed perspective again from third person to Takano. You all play games often, right? Have you ever played Old Maid? No, we play Old Bachelor, though. <laughs> they use the same rules. The human world is just like a game of Old Maid. Everyone's trying to foist the Old Maid onto someone else. It's a game that seeks to determine not a winner, but a single loser. The sacrifice. You see, I pick the Joker. But there's nobody else to pass the card to. That's why I'll shoot you. As my revenge. Fitting for this irrational world of man, isn't it? I'm preparing myself to shoot. There's no hesitation left in me. I will shoot her. I'm serious. 
Mion closed her eyes and opened her arms to try and shield her friends as much as she could. You know what's especially weird, though? Like, the CG of Takano, like, you know, she's covered in rain, it's still somewhat dark and muggy out, it's clearly wet out, but then the actual backgrounds are just like, ah, what a beautiful sunny day in the middle of the woods. <laughs> Fucking Christ. And that was when Hanyu stepped forward and placed herself in front of Mion. H Hanyu! Get back! Brave Mion. I've witnessed your courage. That's more than enough. If the Joker can't be passed to anyone else in this human world, then it's my job to accept it. Hanyu, what are you? Rika, I had a lot of fun in this world. Thank you for letting me join the club. It was so much more fun to be in it than to just to watch. So thank you. I enjoyed myself. I was so happy spending time with all of you. In that moment, Hanyu glared at me adamantly. Now shoot me, child of man. With that sin you must foist onto another, I will accept it. Yeah, see my point? Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Fine! Die! The club members must have thought I was joking or bluffing. They didn't think that I would actually shoot. There was a noise like something exploding. In a world where time became as sticky as syrup, we saw it happen. The silver bullet hitting an invisible wall in front of Hanyu. As though the wall was protecting her. The bullet wanted to pierce Hanyu's chest, but it couldn't reach its goal. A bead of sweat formed on Hanyu's forehead. She had stopped the bullet with an invisible force. Correct me if I'm wrong, but in the anime, she diverted the bullet past her head, right? Like, she just changed its trajectory and passed it into, like, a tree behind her? I guess that's just cooler animated than, oops, the, the bullet go dinky on the fucking invisible wall. Hmm. Uh, on you! I'm okay. I can do this, even in human form. The silver bullet was being pushed back. Takano was startled by this otherworldly phenomenon, but then she spoke one phrase. You... You... MONSTER! <laughs> the silver bullet smashed through that invisible wall. Oh, that's why I'm confused. <laughs> because it's not over yet. There was no longer a wall at all. There was no wall to protect Hanyu from the bullet. The bullet approached Hanyu's chest. Somebody let out a silent scream. Nobody could stop it. Nobody could stop that bullet! In that world of frozen time, nobody could stop the bullet that was stopped just inches in front of Hanyu's chest. Hanyu's friends had seen the scene before. The moment of checkmate. No matter how much they screamed, there was no way to avoid this tragedy. They knew that from their memories. <laughs> you will die for sure! Think about the good old times as much as you want. When you're finished doing that, the bullet will pierce your chest, drown in your own blood! <laughs> Unless I was prepared to do so, I wouldn't be here! Hanyu thought that this would take care of everything. Hanyu wasn't supposed to exist in the first place. She would leave the stage, and the rest of the cast would stay unharmed. This is how it's supposed to be. But, in that moment, something happened to surprise even Hanyu. In the world of frozen time, in which nobody could move... Rika reached out and put her hand on the bullet that was stopped in midair. How could she move? Even Hanyu couldn't move. Why could a mere human like Rika grab that bullet? 
The power of friendship. <laughs> Don't be so surprised. You've already learned about that. You've learned about how to make a miracle happen. A lot of amazing things happened today, but none of them were worthy of being called a miracle. If we all believed in each other, it was supposed to happen. Therefore, I will perform a real miracle in this very last moment. I am the reincarnation of Oyashiro-sama, after all. So let me make a miracle happen at the very end. Okay. Rika rubbed the frozen bullet gently. Very gently. And then held it. And embraced it lovingly. Her hands at her chest. In that world where not even Hanyu could move. Now I realize that neither Takano nor Hanyu listen when other people talk. Didn't you hear what Mion said? We don't play old maid. We play old bachelor instead. Takano laughed and said they were basically the same game, but they're totally different. Yeah. She did that. <laughs> An old maid, a single jo joker, yeah. A single joker, an unharmonized element, is added. To a full, harmonized set of cards, and people try to foist it onto another. But in Old Bachelor, one card is removed from that harmonized world, and everyone foists the unharmonized fragments on each other. It's different than having a Joker, because everything would be in harmony if there wasn't something missing. Players try to get rid of something in both games, but what they try to get rid of is very different. In our game, the loser is left with one last card, too. I can understand how Takano thought they were the same thing. But, they are different. Because in our game, if the missing card was added back in, there would be no loser. Hanyu, the missing card in this world where someone has to foist their sins onto another, has joined the game. So this game has no losers. Yet you're still trying to take one card away? What a waste of a miracle. This world doesn't need a losing card. That is the answer I finally reached after a thousand year journey. Trying to find a miracle. The answer has always been there. It was there in the very first game of Mion's Club. There was always a loser because we were playing a game of cards with one missing. If we could fill in for the missing card by believing each other and helping each other, then it would complete a full deck of 52 cards. A complete world without a loser. A complete world where no one is left out. Nobody has to stay out of the circle. No one has to cry or be burdened with sins. A world where everyone holds each other's hands and forgives each other's sins. When people live, there will be sin. What's important isn't to avoid sins, but to forgive them. A world can only become ugly and twisted when people try to stay pure. Let us accept our sins. Let us all forgive. That's the answer Rika Frude reached. A complete world. A world free from the sins of the human world, where one has to become a loser. Rika reached that as a human being. After an unbelievably long time, she finally reached it. Welcome home, mother. Sure. <laughs> the frozen time had begun to thaw. There was smoke coming from the muzzle of Takano's gun, so it was definitely fired. However, nobody got hit. Keiichi looked around fearfully to make sure nobody was bleeding. They were all fine. Nobody had been shot. <laughs> you missed. Serves you right. <laughs> the tension lifted in Mion's body, and she began to sweat all over. How did I miss at this distance? All the club members thought the same thing. It was a miracle 
that the bullet didn't hit anyone. The club members had all felt the same way. They were all thinking, if it's going to hit someone, let it be me. However, Rika Frude wished for a miracle that was far beyond that. Rika wished for a miracle that was higher than self-sacrifice. She wished for a world where the bullet wouldn't hit anyone. She wished for a world where Takano wouldn't be hurt because she shot someone. Footsteps were rushing towards them. Takano tried to run, but she tripped over a root and the scrapbook in her hand scattered everywhere. As she tried to gather up the papers, members of the Bloodhounds surrounded her. All the Bloodhounds pointed their guns her way, and some even poked her with them, but Takano still didn't stop gathering up the papers. Some of the men stepped on the papers, and Takano tried to pull them out from under them. She tried to pull them out, begging them in tears not to step on her precious papers. Major Takano, you are under arrest. So, it's all my fault, is it? <laughs> oh. <laughs> the club members, feeling bad for her, looked at the ground. STAND UP! PUT YOUR HANDS BEHIND YOUR BACK! HEY! DON'T RESIST! No, 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 no. I want to take my grandpa's scrapbook with me! No! No! Takano just wanted to pick up the pages of her scrapbook. But the bloodhounds, thinking that she was just resisting, pulled on her hair to try to make her stand up. Although this was her fate, it was too hard to watch her be treated that way. And then, a noble voice resounded among them. I know who that is. Yup. WAIT! Radiating with divine light, a man appeared. They all knew this man very well. But they had never seen him look so determined. I'm First Lieutenant Tomatake from the Research Division. I'll take it from here. But sir, we've been ordered by headquarters to bring her back to Tokyo immediately. Can't you tell? Just look at her! Look at all the scars! She's been scratching herself! She must have Hinamizawa Syndrome! I forgot about this scene! There were lots of horrible scars on her wrists, arms, and neck. Takano had scratched herself throughout the day because of all the stress. There was no way for anyone to be certain if those marks were symptoms of the syndrome. But when Tomatake said that, it certainly sounded true. But... The Major must have been given medication to prevent her from contracting the disease. There's no way she should have it. Haven't you read the report? It says that the inoculation isn't 100% effective. If you'd read the report completely, you would know that these are symptoms of the terminal stage. The research division thinks that her treatment should take priority. We must determine if this incident was truly her will, or if she became delusional due to the syndrome. Needing someone to take advantage of that situation. We have to be very, very certain. Otherwise, it'll be impossible to resolve this matter. Was it her fault? Or was it the fault of her disease? It's impossible to, ter to determine that right now. To make sure, she has the right to receive treatment. And she is obligated to let herself be treated. Juro, son... Take her to the Irie Institute so that she can be examined immediately. Notify Lieutenant Colonel Irie so he can prepare to treat Major Takano. However, from here on, the Major will be placed under strict observation and all activities will be restricted. The particular orders should come from command through Colonel Oka, Director of Investigations. The Bloodhounds conveyed all this information over the radio. Nobody had any objections. Their job was to arrest her, after all. Any interrogations or investigations after that were the job of investigations. So if those were the orders from investigations, then that was that. Tomatake walked over to the muddy figure of Takano. Churo-san! Churo-san! <laughs> the crying is hard, okay? Crying's very hard. Takano buried her face in Tomatake's chest and cried. Or tried to, because it's difficult, you know? <laughs> Only Tomatake and Takano knew the meaning of those tears. Sorry for being late. 
I'm here for you. <laughs> Crying. Chiro-san. Chiro-san. <laughs> I'm sorry. I couldn't resist. <laughs> you. You're not as bad as you think you are. You can start over. You can start your life over as Miyoko Tanashi. I can't. I can't. I've committed too many sins. I shouldn't be allowed to start over. I should be dead. Otherwise, the weight of my sins will... Well, that's true. Your sins may not be so light. But don't worry. I'll be with you. We can atone together. Let's atone for Mio Takano's sins. And let's bring back Miyoko Tanashi together. Until then, I'll be right here with you! Can I... continue to live? Can I live? Everyone tells me that if I die, things will work out. But... can I still live? Are you saying I'm allowed to live? Can I be forgiven? The world may not forgive you. But so what? I'll forgive you. So let's live. Death can't atone for sins. You must live, and ask the world to forgive you, and then start your life over. Then you will remember. You will remember what kind of person you used to be, and what kind of smile you used to have. After a while, Takana was taken to the Irie Institute in handcuffs. She was, however, handcuffed with her hands in front of her. She was holding the scrapbook. Tomatake had cleaned the mud off of it. The downpour from the early afternoon had passed. The cicadas began singing again, reminding everything that this was a normal June in Hinamizawa. It was so hot despite being June, and the sky was brilliantly clear. Someone asked someone else the time. She looked at her watch. It was 3 p.m. The Watanagashi Festival would be starting at 5. It was almost time. Even from there, the Furude Shrine could be seen. There were red lanterns hanging all over. Once the sun went down, those lanterns would be lit. It was almost time for the Watanagashi Festival. And with that, everything would end when the Higurashi cry. The game that stretched across different worlds had ended, and what the winner obtained after their victory is that the game ended without a loser. Hanyu was prepared to leave after the game was over, but she was still there. She was allowed to be there. In other words, she wasn't the card that was taken away. The card that was taken to play their game of Old Bachelor was no longer there. The breeze rustled Hanyu's sweaty, messed up hair. She was dumbfounded. Rika went over and stood next to her. She didn't need to say anything. She only smiled at Hanyu. That girl had pretended to be a bystander, but decided to step onto the stage. And then she thought that was enough, and tried to step off of it. With those memories of her bright time on stage, she tried to step off, but someone grabbed her sleeve and stopped her. She was told that she could stay. Then she realized she was still on the stage, and she didn't have to leave after all. There was a spot for her on the stage, and she was no longer a bystander. And that was an unbelievable miracle. She didn't even exist in the script. Nobody needed her to be there. But the miracle had allowed her to stay. You suffered so much during your journey. This miracle isn't even enough to repay you for what you've gone through. Nipa, wrong fucking voice. God damn it. Rika, why do you gotta be so difficult? <laughs> ow, ow, ow. This is more than enough. This miracle is more than enough. Rika smiled at Hanyu one more time and passed her what was in her right hand. Hanyu felt something cold and hard, 
What was it? It was a rock. Hanyu slowly opened her hand and looked at it. It was the bullet Takano had fired. This was the proof of their miracle. It was the proof that Hanyu could exist there. It was the proof that they could be together forever and ever. It'll be dark soon. It's time for the festival. Ow. Oh, we'll have so much fun together. You can't just watch us anymore. I'm sure there will be plenty of punishments to torment the poor, poor newcomer. I don't just have to watch the Watanagashi Festival, huh? That's right. Because you don't watch a festival, you enjoy it. And see, never mind. <laughs> that felt like... That felt like the last line, but <laughs> oh well. Were they testing the speakers? It was still bright outside, but there was music playing already. The cheap, dubbed BGM collection of festival music could be heard from the Furude Shrine in the distance. It sounded so exciting to her. This was what she had wanted to join in on all this time. Rika held her hand. Let's go together. Let's go to the Watanagashi Festival. All of us. Together. Okay. <laughs> now we're almost at and scene, I would imagine. Yeah. And scene. Most likely. <laughs> you never know with Ryukishi, honestly. Okay, never fucking mind, probably. No, maybe. Maybe it's just gonna end on a CG, because console release has CGs. Okay, never fucking mind. <laughs> Not insane. They had almost too much energy left. It'd been a long day, and many things had happened. But they still had the energy to go to the festival. It was, after all, the special day of Watanagashi. The curse of Oyashiro-sama had been lifted, and no tragedy would ever occur again. It was the first peaceful Watanagashi. The first one without a tr tragedy since the damn conflict. Or so they wanted you to think. <laughs> to be continued, the villagers had noticed that the phone lines were disconnected during the day, but it was fixed so quickly that they didn't pay much attention. They heard the self-defense force helicopter near the mountains, but rumor had it that they came to the wrong place for their training. The elderly villagers laughed and said that the young men of the National Defense Force need to pay more attention. Some people say the self-defense force even came to the Erie Clinic. The villagers didn't even get suspicious about that. They assumed that the Erie Clinic had started doing physical checkups for the SDF. There were pieces of broken glass on the roadside near the village border as if there was an accident. Some people wondered how anyone could have had an accident when there was no obstruction on the road. The elderly people said to each other that they always had to drive carefully, even on a familiar road. But it looked only like a trace of a normal accident, so they didn't get suspicious. <laughs> there was a dead body hanging from a tree in the middle of the woods, but everyone was just like, Oh, that's just Gary. That's just Gary being weird. The rest was a ghost story. The villagers heard an extra firework to signal the festival taking place. It wasn't an echo. The people in charge of the fireworks were puzzled. But when Rika said Oyashiro-sama must have shot the extra firework, the villagers simply believed that was true. It was the night of Watanagashi, the biggest festival of the year. The villagers forgot their worries and enjoyed themselves. The club members were doing great as usual. Without their sound effects. Just flashing lights and eerie. You'd almost think that Irie didn't just get into a car crash earlier today, and pro I probably heard this. Hey, you exist in this chapter. Hi. <laughs> she didn't show up once before now, did she? Maybe in like the fragments, but <laughs> damn, hi, Chie. They were doing so great that they were all taken to the main tent and yelled at by the mayor. That was a normal Watanagashi night for the villagers. But there was one thing that was very different. The girls fought for an unimaginably long time in many different worlds for the sake of this night. However, 
nobody would ever know that because it's standing in the corner like <laughs> they don't know this is the 7,000th Watanagashi I've attended. Oh, there was another big change too. Rika Frude said that she wants to go to a pool in the summer. Okay. This is not something I remember. Are we not done with the chapter? Like, <laughs> It's unusual for her to say she wants to do something. She wants to see the stars. She wants to go on a camping trip. She wants to look at the sunflowers. Oh, no, I, I understand. I understand why now, because she hasn't had a peaceful life in centuries. She wants to make the school into a haunted house, etc. There are so many things she wants to do over the summer break. Right. Rika Frude, for the first time, is making plans for after June 1983. Because this is the first summer break she's going to experience after 100 years of repeating the same life. She will now experience an all-new summer vacation. Who would stop her from getting excited about that? Rika Frude is looking forward to waking up before Satoko to rip the page off the calendar at the end of June. Rika Frude's infinite future has begun. There are infinite possibilities, yet she can only make one choice. That, but that's why it's a great world. Let's talk for a moment about the people who fought with Rika Frude. Oh boy. <laughs> it's a, it's a post-credits recap, pre the credits. <laughs> Mion Sonozaki has vowed to study hard so she can continue her education after the summer break. According to Keiichi, even that may not be enough time for her. However, how can the legendary club member Mion Sonozaki fail an entrance exam? She then went on to fail an entrance exam. She will more than likely find a way to get into the school she wants to go to, perhaps using that gun. Hopefully it is an illegal one. Oh, I jinxed it. Anyhow, she's looking forward to enjoying her final summer break. So she has tons of plans. Isn't she a middle schooler? Like... The club members can't get away from Mion, even during the summer. I guess that's just another fucking example of Ryukishi being vague with how old Rena, Keiichi, and Mion are, at least. Although they're like 13, 14, 15-ish, so yeah. Once you're involved with her, she'll always find a way to get at you. No matter how much you want to be alone, you'll never, you'll, ne you'll never go back to spending a boring summer by yourself. Keiichi Mayabara has been asked by Mion and Chie-sensei to be their next class president. He was also asked to be the next club, club leader, too, but he declined immediately. Keiichi likes the club because Mion runs it. He continued saying that it's Mion's club until she got mad. Keiichi can't understand why she's so angry. Well, Keiichi wouldn't be Keiichi if he wasn't dense. Yep. So things are rather lively around him again today. His good name continues to spread, even in Okinomiya. Rena Ryugu is growing more energetic every day, too. That's great. Oh, she's stealing everybody. Satoko, Rika, and Hanyu spend every day in fear of being abducted by her. Still, she's been acting more mature lately. She takes care of her younger classmates. And she's almost like a mother figure to the class. She is like a mother to all of the club members, too. After hearing that, Keiichi said that he'd be a father for the class. Funny, great, great job. As usual, Rena thought about that too much and blushed. And then beat the fucking piss out of him. Satoko Hojo is as lively as ever. She used up most of her traps on the mountain during the battle with the mountain dogs, so she's setting up new ones for the next event. Rumor has it that some members of the Bloodhounds were so impressed with her trap techniques that they asked her for some lessons. There's supposed to be a training area near Mount Fuji, and they asked her to set up her traps there. Hold on, did I just miss that? The Bloodhounds! Okay. <laughs> sure. That's not a very good idea. The Sea of Trees really will become a forest of no return. Either way, Satoko keeps saying how she wants to fight against the Bloodhounds next. She's invincible. Also, she's become a great cook. That's because Hanyu has been teaching her. 
Somehow, the god knows how to cook. According to Hanyu, Satoko is a quick learner, as compared to Rika. Satoko's dream is to master fried chicken, which is her brother's favorite, based, <laughs> and welcome him home with it. Good taste, Sato. See, fuck yeah. <laughs> I'm the only one who knows this. But her dream may come true very soon. As for her brother, Satoshi Hojo is yet to return home. His condition is unchanged. If there's been any change, it's in Shion Sonozaki. She goes to the clinic on her days off. Nobody knows why she goes there, but she seems to be very happy, so nobody pays much attention to it. Mion is teased Shion by saying that maybe she's planning on getting implants, but Shion just smiles. Also, for whatever reason, she's been visiting her relative's clothes shop and buying up all kinds of men's clothing. Lately, she's even started buying more than just men's clothing. But why is she so excited when she visits the clinic with a maid outfit that's not in her size? What are they doing to the poor guy? The truth is shrouded in mystery. Something about that just sounds like it'd be illegal. Like... <laughs> The biggest change is probably that she owned baby Satoko nowadays. She tries to make Satoko call her Nene, which only annoys Satoko. Yeah, that would make sense. <laughs> Kyosuke Irie has two jobs now. On one hand, he's a respected doctor, and on the other hand, he's an evangelist for mates. That's not a job. The Irie clinic was supposed to be closed, but the villagers pleaded with the authorities not to shut it down. While Irie isn't originally from the village, he and everyone else feel that he's one of the villagers now. He's an indispensable part of village life. The conservative attitude toward Hinamizawa syndrome is gone, and now it is being researched very proactively. The syndrome is being researched so passionately that hopefully in the near future, all victims of this disease will be freed for good. Also later on, Irie will publish an advanced article about the influence of the brain on human behavior, which will surprise people in the medical world. I won't go into the details here, but it will talk about how one should hate the sins instead of the sinner. Oh my god, fucking Christianity bullshit. Hate the sin, not the sinner. My, my grandson might be gay, but I don't hate him for being gay. I hate gay for being him. The deceased Hifumi Takano and Mio Takano's names will be mentioned in that article. Cool. Jiro Tomatake still visits Hinamizawa every season. He is still known as the fighting traveling photographer, and he continues to walk around the village looking for good picture spots. However, he isn't seen in the village as much as before. His bicycle is always parked around the back of the clinic, so maybe he spends a lot of time there. Some villagers say maybe he's sick and being treated, but his bright smile proves they are wrong. <laughs> Little did you know, sick people can't smile. Mio Takano hasn't been seen since that day. Nobody knows where she has gone, but obviously Tomatake isn't worried, so she must be doing fine. She'll probably show up one day out of nowhere and start telling ghost stories to scare some kids. As for Mamaru Akasaka, what happened to him was pretty funny. Just like his wife in that other world, he fell down the stair. His wife and daughter followed him in secret. They pretended to run into him at the festival. That's not his daughter. Rika called him Papa, so things grew complicated all of a sudden. Well, Akasaka's wife smiled, but she choked his neck with her braided hair. Her arms were folded, but her braid moved like a tail. You don't have to explain anime logic to me. Squeeze. She tortured a man who destroyed a special forces unit without even using a weapon. I swear. Rika continued to tease him, making the situation even worse. However, Akasaka's family liked Hinamizawa, and they said they wanted to come back. Akasaka's daughter, oh yeah, her, <laughs> and Rika grew so close that they seemed like sisters. Kurado Oishi has gotten back into playing Mozong, yeah! Yeah! For whatever reason, Akane Sonozaki has joined his table too. 
And there's rumors a riot squad almost got dispatched to the Mahjong parlor one time. Oh. His colleagues say Oishi has calmed down quite a bit. It's probably because he has reached closure within himself. But his colleagues know nothing about that. He's planning to move to Hokkaido when he retires, but he wants to come back every summer. His bright second life is waiting for him. Tatsuyoshi Kasai hasn't changed much compared to the others. To some people, this was a life-changing event, but for Kasai, it was just another episode added to his Tales of Heroics. According to Kasai, this incident was just a little bigger than usual. If this was just a little unusual, then what in the world would be needed to impress him? <laughs> Why is the first thing that comes to mind just fucking Sephiroth? Like, <laughs> Shion insists that he will tell her, but Kasai only tells her that, it's, that that's a secret. Also, he regretted exposing that part of his past. Shion keeps begging him to tell her all about it, but he simply ignores her. Yeah. Let me talk about myself, too. I, Hanyu, am doing great in my new life as Hanyu Furude. I'm finally getting better at playing games, and now I'm taking the role of the club's dark horse, a position formerly reserved for Keiichi Mayabara. I have a bad habit of believing everything I hear, so Mion and the others always tell me some strange things. Thanks to that, I am getting tougher, to put it in a good way. Shrewd, to put it in a bad one. But then, I need to. I'll, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, 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 thought of a, I thought of something funny for something I'm working on. Just randomly. Uh, I have a sticky now, I'm writing it down. <laughs> okay, now I should remember that. Okay. But then, I need to. Otherwise, I wouldn't survive in this club. I'm sorry, it's, it's great. <laughs> I'm going to continue to learn a lot of stuff through these club activities so I can live in this human world. Sunday, June 19th, 1983. Night falls on my longest day of the past thousand years. Did we just go back to, Wat to Watanagashi? Okay. The club members are having a blast. A lot of people are here. The stall vendors are still doing business. The speakers are blaring rough yet exciting festival music. I've known all of these, but how wonderful it is to actually feel and hear them in person. I thought I knew. I thought I knew, because I'd been following and watching them. But that was completely different. I knew of it, but this is the first time I've actually experienced it. We had a takoyaki eating contest. There was no octopus in it, but it was still very tasty. We had a shaved ice eating contest. Keiichi fucking loved it! <laughs> I would have enjoyed the shaved ice if I had eaten it more slowly. I bought a candied apple for the first time. Everyone took a bite from it. It was tasty. And it was fun. Riveting. We played a shooting game. I didn't know how difficult it would be to shoot a target. But it was fun too. Also, we played a shady lottery game. <laughs> It was one of those things where you pulled a string and got a prize. Nobody got a good prize. I think I saw that in an anime recently, but I don't remember which one? It must have been Komi-san. That's like the only slice of life I've seen recently. I don't remember if it was, so. Uh... We all complained about it to the vendor. That, too, was just so much fun. Then it was time for the dedication dance. Of course, we go there early, so we commandeered the best seats. I snuck out and stood where I was told to. I could see better than the other club members. This was the spot where the object of worship sat. This was where I was supposed to be during the ritual dance. No, this was where I thought I had to be. But seeing the dance from that spot wasn't fun. Therefore, I returned to where I was, and sat with everyone else. They saved me a spot. Everyone rubbed my head while asking me where I went. I apologized by saying, ow, ow, as you do. That made me very happy. Great. <laughs> I watched the performance in the crowd of people. It was the best dance I've witnessed in the past thousand years. I couldn't keep either my happiness or my tears from flowing out. After the dance was over, 
A handful of cotton was passed around to all the villagers. We let the cotton absorb all the filth and sins of the past year, and washed it down the stream. Cotton is cotton. Obviously, it's not human. We use cotton instead of a human so that nobody is sad. Yeah, that's good Hanyu logic. In other words, this is the way to purify sins without making anyone suffer. Here you are. This is for you, Hanyu-chan. Do you want to know how to do it? Yes, I do. I go like this and drift it down the stream, right? Ow, ow. Wait, did I misread or something? Do you want to... Oh, no, it's do you... Okay, I'm stupid. <laughs> The girl who gave me the cotton took the letter I from her name during last year's Watanagashi and washed it down the stream. By doing so, she was freed from her suffering and began a new life. I mean, sure, I guess that can be how it works. We drifted our sins down the stream. It's not the same as pushing our sins onto the cotton. Instead, we wash away our own sins and forgive ourselves. We forgive each other, we help each other, and that's how we create our own story. I put my cotton in the stream gently. Oh, CG. Big CG. Long CG. I, I was gonna say, is there- is it only those three? <laughs> oh, Shion also. She's a character. Right. <laughs> the cotton went down the stream. Into the world where sins are cleansed. I let my bare feet soak in the queer stream as I watched the long, long line of cotton flowing downstream in the dark, surrounded by people sending their cotton flowing down the wondrous stream. And then, scene. As it fades out very slowly. Okay. <laughs> God damn it, it's not done. <laughs> this is a complete world where all the fragments were put together. This is an ideal world. What else is there? What else do you need? Hanyu Furude still wants more. Because we can be even happier than this. We can be happier if we wish to be. Not a long time from now. But in the near future. Then when is it? I told you, it's in the near future. We will be happy then, too. See? Okay. <laughs> you just wanted to leave me off on something cryptic. Got it! Makes sense. Alrighty. Da-da-da-da! Everyone is entitled to happiness, the difficult part is accepting that. Everyone is entitled to happiness, the difficult part is fulfilling that. I too am entitled to happiness, the difficult part is working out a compromise. Frederica Burncastle, depicting good goodbye with duplicate I can't read that. Because from now on, I'm going to live a much happier life. I'm not going to compromise with just this. We'll retrieve all the happiness that we missed. 100 years worth for me, 1,000 years worth for you. Thank you, Frederica Burncastle. Oh, Muzika. Credits? Or are you just gonna sing at me? I don't recognize the song, actually. <laughs> Unless I'm just stupid. Oh. Oh, it's actually stuff to read. Regarding the coup d'etat and the Erie Institute proposal. Regarding the coup d'etat of the Erie Institute background. Oh my god, that's a lot of writing. One of the responsibilities of the Erie Institute was the administration of murder. Okay, I, I can read it in my head, but I'm not going to be able to read that out loud. Okay, um, the Institute were Okay, no, I can't read that that fast. Oh, wait, and they are continuing to investigate her background. Crossed out. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to scan and mention anything that sounds, like, super interesting. Oh, they crossed out another thing. There remain many suspicious suspicions elements in his background. And the department is continuing their investigation. I suppose there's not. More additional information crossed out. Some members of the inquiry committee have raised concerns about the management investigation. If it's the writer's personal opinion, we should consider the importance of this incident and select more suitable candidates for committee so as to verify this matter from a different angle. Da -da -da -da. Nomura! Bish! Then shit in Japanese that I can't read. 
and then in like Romanized Japanese that I can't fucking read. I don't even recognize any of those words. <laughs> Lots of shit. Oh, now it's just credits, I think. Because I'm pretty sure that 07. Yeah, Ryukishi. Yeah. End script. Yeah, credits. Okay! So that means we're done! Although, if this is anything like. Was it Sumi Horoboshi? There's gonna be like a 30, 30 minute post credit scene. But this is the last chapter, not. Uh, like a random one in the middle all right well well um final thoughts i will start by saying that don't hate me for this i don't like this chapter very much compared to the other seven not because it's bad like it's bad relative to the others i think i just i, I feel like this chapter really only served to just be like all right well, it's the world of- I was told this in the comments, too. This is the world of miracles, so we just have everything go in the best way possible. Even if it's fucking weird. Like, there's some stuff that's realistic, okay? There's some stuff that I'll throw a bone to the game and just be like, yeah. Not everything goes completely hunky-dory, okay? Tomatake gets kidnapped. Good. Add some conflict. Irie, uh drives off the road. Good great makes sense but then there's just insane coincidences insane shit and i'm not talking shit like akasaka showing up at the sonozaki house that's where he was going anyways he didn't just sense something's a mess i need to go there because that was the plan from the get-go i'm talking shit like shion and kasai driving by shortly after irie had his in had his accident i'm talking shit like fucking most of the traps just happening to work on the mountain dogs and like i'm sorry it's impossible for me to believe that mion was able to actually actually hold her own in a fight with okanogi no i don't believe that i am sorry i don't care if she had military training in arizona when she was like seven i don't give a shit okanogi's what like 45 years old? He should be able to hold his own against a 15-year-old girl. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's just stupid. Um, that Again, that's not to say this chapter is bad. I think the fragments were good, if not a little long. I think the prologue was good. The prologue was really good. It's everything after the fragments where it's just kind of like, okay, well, that's kind of stupid. That's also a little stupid. Shion and Kasai out of nowhere. That's stupid. But, yeah. If I were to say, though, I, I remember I did this for... Do I have to click? Because it's been on this logo for, like, a minute. Okay. Ah! Scenario jump! Crazy. I do I do know I have to go back through. The tips reading room has been unlocked. I can read the tips. I've, I, there were no tips. The staff room! I've received a new tip. The forbidden treasure Onigari no Ryo. Ryuo. 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 Okay, I got it. Oh, achievement unlocked and so the shining future. Dot, dot, dot. Cool. What is that, a snowball? Oh, it's a cotton. It's cotton. I'm stupid. Okay, so if I were to... I remember I did this at the end of Umaneko where I basically kind of rated the chapters from worst to best. And it's ironic... Because in Umaneko, Chapter 8 was my favorite. And I still hold true to that. I still think Chapter 8 is my favorite in Umaneko. But if I were to do that for Higurashi, I'll start with my least favorite. Easily Matsuri Bayashi. I'm sorry. I don't hate it. It's just too convenient, okay? It's way too convenient. Not to mention, like, the, the way they defeat Takano is cheesy as fuck. Rika being like, Miracle time grabs the bullet out of the air. That's that's some fucking like That's some fucking like shadow boxing bullshit that children in first grade do where they're just like I'm Sephiroth from Final Fantasy. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm Sonic the Hedgehog Sonic the out. I'm Sonic the Hedgehog. You're gonna fight me I run circles around you until you get dizzy. Nope because I have the godly power to not get dizzy I can, I spin my long sword and cut your head off it grows back. Shit like that, okay? It's just like, oh, you're shooting us? Grabs the bullet out of midair. Too bad. You only have one bullet, by the way. Damn it, I lost. It's just stupid. Um, 
But, yeah. <laughs> it, it, Matsuri Bayashi is just so fucking weird. It has ridiculously high highs. And then, what the fuck? It doesn't have lows. It just has what the fuck am I reading moments, you know? Like, absolute... Oh, yeah, the camera at the clinic also? Biggest plot hole in this chapter. Biggest fucking plot hole. Makes absolutely no sense. So, there's just a camera out at the clinic, and they're looking at the cameras in the basement room. They don't happen to notice that one of the cameras is out, or if they do, they don't think to station someone there to pay attention? Or do they think, like, oh, no one's gonna go through the window? Especially not, I don't know, we know Irie is not on our side, and we don't have him captured, so, yeah, plus he could literally, even if we did, if there was any opportune moment for him to tell anyone, yeah, Tomatake's in the clinic, you're gonna have to get him, uh, the camera outside of my office is broken, that's on this side of the building, here I drew a picture, like, <laughs> the, the, the fact that they don't station anyone there is just mad dumb, maybe they don't have... Maybe the people in the basement don't have cameras for the first floor, considering they somehow didn't see anyone inside the building beat up the people in the other room. But, fuck if I know. Like, there's just not cameras inside, and then there's... Like, what, is there a camera outside which they gave up on, and then the one at the bottom of the stairs? Like, that that's just weird to me. So, Matsuri Bayashi is... The worst of the chapters, just because it's weird as fuck. After that, I would have to say Himatsubushi. Just because it's really short. The fight scene is very janky. And... I don't know, I feel like, like compared to the emotional moments of other arcs, it's very cheesy. Uh, six is... Uh, what would I say is six? I want to say Watanagashi, only because, like... If Mayakashi didn't exist, Watanagashi would be a lot better. But the fact that Mayakashi exists means it's just kind of that low by default. So, yeah. Fifth, I really, really, really want to say Mina Goroshi. But then I also want to say Tatari Goroshi. So I'm just going to say they're tied. I can, reckon, I can understand why people think Tatari Goroshi is the best of the question arcs. I disagree. Because it's also really weird and kind of god complex -y. Like, I feel like if we weren't in Keiichi's perspective, or if he didn't also go crazy and just be like, I curse this world. Like, oh, fuck you, Tepe. Disappear. And then Tepe disappears. Although he did kill him, I know. But then he's like, oh, fuck you, Takano. Takano's gone. Oh, fuck you, Irie. Irie's dead. Oh, fuck you, Oishi. Oishi's gone. Fuck this world, gas disaster. Like, it's just weird. Um, but Mina Garoshi, I feel like, also has some cheesy moments. This is Ryu... As, if I'm not mistaken, Higurashi is Ryukishi's first major work. And I'm not trying to rip into Higurashi out of saying, like, oh, I'm, I'm sick of this series. I think Higurashi was bad. Like, no, I like this series. I love it, in fact. But I'm just pointing out the things that confuse me about the overall plots to individual arcs. So... Yeah, Mina Garoshi kind of has some cheesy moments where it's just like, okay, well, we're going to go to the child consultation center, and then we're going to go back, and then we're going to go back, and then we're going to go back. Like, there was like a cycle in it for like half the chapter. Before and after that, it's great. Mina Garoshi has some really good moments before and after the let's save Satoko for 15 hours point. But, yeah. Um... Plus, Mina Garoshi did crash a lot for me for some fucking reason when I, re when I went through it, so I don't fucking know. Um, so yeah, that would be 5th and 4th. I can't decide between Tatari Garoshi and Mina Garoshi, which I think is better. I'm leaning towards Mina Garoshi, but I don't know. 3rd, um, I would have to say this might be a weird choice, but I want to say Mayakashi. Only because, like, I just think Goni Kakushi and Sumi Horoboshi are better. I, like, the other three chapters, I don't think there's any explicit things wrong with them. I just think Oni Kakushi and Sumi Horoboshi are more interesting than Mayakashi, because Mayakashi's biggest downside is it's a behind-the-scenes of Watanagashi. That's its only major problem. It has some cool moments, but then it also, like, 
sours some stuff about Watanagashi, and I don't want to let it get off scot-free for that. <laughs> I know, weird, but still. Um, then between Oni Kakushi and Sumihara Boshi, I only want to say Oni Kakushi is better because of how Sumihara Boshi makes people think of Oni Kakushi. Because, like, if you somehow go through Oni Kakushi without realizing that Keiichi's the one who's insane and not Rena and Mio, and if you somehow come out on the other end with that mindset, Sumihara Boshi is eye opening as fuck, which is ironic because Meakashi literally means eye opening. But then, also, just out of, like, pure interest, Sumi Horoboshi has a bit of a cycle to it and a, and a few stupid aspects. Just just a little bit. I, I think it's very interesting on average compared to Oni Kakushi because of Rena's backstory and all that, but then there's all the conspiracy stuff and there's, like, the scrapbooks. That, like, some stuff that I don't care about, not to mention... The post credit scene where Akasaka's talking to Oishi for half an hour about the gas disaster, which was stupid as fuck. But, well, it wasn't post credits, it was a tip that you get it after beating the main story. But, yeah. I think Oni Kakushi just fits into Higurashi incredibly well compared to Sumi Horiboshi. So, yeah, weird, huh? <laughs> so, worst to best than in terms of the chapter numbers to make it easier to understand. Chapter 8 is the worst. Then 4, 2, 3, 7, 5, 6, 1. Weird how Oni Kakushi is my favorite. Considering, like, if you look at Umineko, I don't remember where I put chapter 1 then, but it wasn't any higher than 4th, I believe. Like, I think my top 3 were, like, chapter 3, then uh, 4, then 8. And 6 was probably 4th. Or was 5 4th? I think 6 was 4th. Yeah, one was pr either, like, sixth or seventh. Or was one last? I can't fucking remember. It doesn't matter. Anyways, we got more shit to do. We're not done. So, let's look at the tips. I have a tip, apparently. The Forbidden Treasure Onigari no Ryuo. The Forbidden Treasure Onigari no Ryuo. It's the most valuable asset of the Frude Shrine that's kept in the Ritual Storehouse. In ancient times... When this place was a chaotic world of both humans and demons, this precious sword defeated the demon god. Wow. However, nobody has seen it for a thousand years. According to the legend, it is sealed- eh, I can't speak. It is sealed in the statue dedicated to Oyashiro Sama in the ritual storehouse. Because of its structure, as long as the belief in Oyashiro Sama continues, it will remain a forbidden tool forever sealed away. Also, it is only mentioned in the Forbidden Scrolls of the Frude Shrine. Therefore, only a handful of the Frude family heads have ever known about its existence. According to several of these Forbidden Scrolls, the sword is shaped like a willow branch. There are some ink paintings of the sword made by a, new, by a few Frude heads, but none of them match that description. That means they drew those pictures from their imagination. The legend says there was a girl named Oka who received a divine message that commanded her to defeat the demon god. However, neither the swords of humans nor demons could conquer the demon god. It would require a blade that not, was neither a human sword nor a demon sword. Only a sword that mixes human and demon qualities could defeat the demon god. It has been said repeatedly that the ancestors of Hinamizawa are half demon and half human. Oka Furude, dates unknown, is said to be the first person whose blood was mixed in that way. This description is what conveys that. Heaven gave Oka a precious sword. The precious sword was shaped like a willow branch. Its tip split three ways, which symbolized heaven, earth, and people in unity. It also symbolizes the harmony between heaven, demons, and humans. Oka headed to the swamp where the demon god hid and defeated him with this precious, with this treasured sword. Each forbidden scroll describes how she defeated the demon god differently. Some say she disciplined him, some say he ran away, some say he surrendered. What happened to the demon god afterwards is unclear too. The oldest scroll says the precious sword destroyed the demon god's horn, but other books don't mention that. The precious sword that defeated the demon god was then enshrined, and was named Onigari no Ryuo. 
Oka sealed this precious sword in the deepest place of the shrine to hide its existence forever. Even if it was created to slay the demon god, the sword didn't belong in this world anymore, and shouldn't exist on the face of the earth. Some said that was why it was removed from the human world. But some said Oka was the daughter of the demon god, and that she wanted to banish the sword that killed her mother. The ancient cult of Oyashiro-sama suggested Oyashiro-sama was this demon god. The source of chaos, the source of all that was evil, and the source of all friction. To prevent the demon god from returning to the human world through worship and comfort is the root of that ancient cult. This may be a type of cult devoted to an evil god. This idea that it's not worshipped for protection but to stave off a curse links slightly to the modern worship of Oyashiro-sama but seems slightly distant from the modern worship that asks for Oyashiro-sama's blessings and sees them as a god of marriage and good relationships. It fosters the argument that humans are good by nature, saying that all discord is the work of Oyashiro-sama, and there are no demons in the world of man. After that, the legend continues on to what we know today, the harmony of humans and demons. But in this era, all the scrolls on the origin of the belief in Oyashiro-sama, and the scrolls of the matriarch of the Frude family, have been sealed due to being forbidden. That happened probably because of the new image of Oyashiro-sama, that of a loving and affectionate god, I keep on hitting my pop filter, I'm sorry, and the ancient image of Oyashiro-sama, the source of all evil, didn't match. It became too difficult to explain the faith's doctrine. Also, if one believes the Forbidden Scrolls, the Frude family was descended from one who killed her own mother. That would mean their blood was cursed. If all of that is true, then today's faith is very different from the one that was started by the Matriarch. One of the leaders of the Frude family from hundreds of years ago wrote this. The Onigari no Ryuo, the legendary precious sword, is a symbol of both the Frude family and the sins of the human world. It was an era where people pushed the source of their evil onto others, and could only purify their sins by killing one another. The matriarch, one, <laughs> took in the root of all evil herself, and let her child murder her. That was how this place was freed from the chaos. One, the matriarch usually means Oka Furude, but sometimes it means her mother. The notion that the matriarch was the demon god was a taboo among the Furude family. However, obviously some leaders interpreted it that way. When the Frude family or when the world of man commits the foolish act of seeking to blame others and tries to return to the world of demons, that is when faith will disappear and the statue's head will shatter. That's when the Oni Onigari no Ryuo will reappear to us. The second coming will once again revive the memory of the Frude family's forgotten sins. Is the demon god a fictional legend? or someone who actually existed. In some rare cases, babies were born with horns, and they were called children of the demon god. Descendants of the Frude family who will read this, the myths passed down by our forbidden scrolls are numerous and their content vastly differs. But don't get caught up in the smoke. No matter how different all of these scrolls are, there is one thing they all want to convey. Search the hearts of Oka Furude the one who sealed the Onigari no Ryuo forever. That is the fate that all the Frude family leaders must understand. Nice! Good to know about this sword at the very end of the story. Well, if we're told about it at a point like this, that means it's important, obviously. Achievement unlock Detective Matsuri Bayashi. Wow, I'm so good at finding all the tips all one. Uh... <laughs> Okay, staff room, I guess, now. Hello, this is Ryukishi07. Thank you for playing Matsure Bayashi. Uh, no. Thank you very much for playing Higurashi When They Cry Until the End. Matsure Bayashi is, in a way, the solution episode for the situation with Takano and the kids starting from halfway through Minagoroshi. How can they defeat Takano's conspiracy? How can they reach their ideal ending? I wrote this episode as a duel between you, the reader, and me, the writer. So if you think you created a better resolution, world, than my Matsuri Bayashi, that means you've defeated Ryukishi 07 in this duel. 
I won't, okay, I won't say that I've thought of better ways to handle this chapter, but I have seen holes in your way, so. Ah, what's that mean? <laughs> I, Ryukishi07, have provided two resolutions. One is how to fight against Takano. First, here is a hint from the Minagaroshi chapter. You find out about Takano's conspiracy, which relies on Emergency Manual 34. Next, here are hints from the Watanagashi and Mayakashi chapters. It has been 48 hours after Rika's death, yet the village is peaceful. If you put those two things together, obviously the basis of the emergency manual which Hifumi Takano wrote, that everyone will develop terminal symptoms within 48 hours, isn't true. Well, no kidding, yeah? I didn't put that together, but yeah, that makes sense. When you put these two together, you can realize that if Rika's body was discovered 48 hours after her death, then it's possible to prevent the final operation. In the Matsurei Bayashi chapter, I wrote about an attacking side and a defending side like a novel. If I were to simply write about the resolution, all I had to write was for Oishi to announce that Rika died at least 48 hours ago, and Takano's conspiracy would fall apart once the news reached Tokyo. This was rather an easy solution, like a puzzle, so I'm sure many of you got this right. The other resolution was the ideal ending for this world. To answer this, I have to explain the worldview of this story first. There are hints all over, but the crucial ones are in the Tatari Goroshi and Mina Goroshi chapters. Satoko's uncle comes home and Satoko's life becomes miserable. How can she be rescued from that situation? If this story was an exercise in murder, then the Tatari Goroshi chapter is the correct answer. Keiichi kills Tape and hides his body well. There's a happy ending. But I didn't end the episode that way. Instead, I denied it with a bad ending. The resolution the worldview of Higurashi When They Cry advocates is a non-violent one, with everyone united together. That is established in question chapters such as Onikakushi, Watanagashi, and Tatari Goroshi. In those worlds, when someone becomes suspicious about everything and worries about it alone, things get worse, and that leads to tragedy. The Mayakashi chapter is the sublimation of that situation. On the other hand, when one talks to their friends, it's revealed that the causes of the tragedies are quite silly. That is indicated in the Sumi Horiboshi and Minagaroshi episodes. In other words, can you see that in the worlds of Higurashi, anything can be overcome when people talk to each other and help one another? Fortunately, unfortunately, sorry, that doesn't happen in reality. Helping each other creates fiction, friction, and oftentimes working alone is a lot simpler, true. However, we always hope that we can connect with other people and understand each other, so that we can face any difficulty. In that sense, this world is a fantasy. That's right. In the worlds of Higurashi, there is one magical rule. That is to talk to others and accept help from them. Then you can defeat anything. With that, it is possible to make a miracle happen. If that could be cast into an absolute rule, It'd be a sort of magical, systematic miracle. Just like Wahanyu and her friends said in the story. That is the worldview of Higurashi when they cry. If you follow that rule and think about an ideal ending, I bet the first thing you'll think about is an ending where, the club where all the club members unite and defeat Takano. Actually, there are scenes in the Matsuri Bayashi chapter that affirm that sort of ending. However, at the same time, Takano is described as a very lonely person. By doing so, I raise a question about the resolution. Everyone else unites, defeats Takano, and makes her into a sacrifice. This is a happy ending for everyone except Takano. It is a very popular style of story for the protagonists to unite together and sacrifice the antagonist. Aliens come to the Earth to invade us, so the world unites and defeats the aliens. Hooray for humans, and we must all get along. This is a very popular storyline all over the world. There are plenty of stories that use aliens, devils, or monsters as queer bad guys and make them into sacrifices. Two parties fighting with each other become allies once the third party shows up. Storylines like these are indeed exciting. By adding a sacrifice, differing parties unite and become allies. To create this situation, there has to be always the third party, the sacrifice, as well. I'm sure many of those who created such stories must have already noticed that. 
We always had a third enemy that can't possibly unite with us. To make up with each other, we try to find a common enemy. Am I the only one who feels that describes our world today? In reality, this world belongs only to humans. There are no aliens or devils or monsters. So for us to find an enemy, we'll have to fight each other forever. To make up with each other, we need a new enemy. So we just end up fighting someone else. In this chapter of Higurashi, I declared that to be the demon of the world of man. With these explanations of the worldview here in mind, do you wonder if the resolution of defeating Takano is in fact an ideal resolution of the Matsuri Bayashi chapter? That's right. It's basically the same foolishness found in Tatari Garoshi. According to that logic, the Mina Garoshi chapter isn't the best resolution for the problems that surround Satoko either. Do you understand that? Well, yeah, because Tepe got arrested. <laughs> How can they make up with Takano? You wouldn't suggest to make Tokyo into a new enemy and let the club members join the Takano, would you? If I continue to talk about this issue, I'll probably end up mentioning something religious, so let me stop here. I mean... Yeah, I mean, that's... More or less... Like, I don't want to spoil anything, but, like, that's what Persona 5 almost did, like... Especially Persona 5 Royal, god. <laughs> Not to say that's a bad thing, but like, yeah, that's basically what happened. Like, okay. Enemy, you're my friend now. Let's go kill god. <laughs> what kind of ending would be the best outcome following the worldview of Higurashi when they cry? Perhaps it's something better than the Matsuri Bayashi chapter. You can consider this a graduating question for Higurashi when they cry. Maybe I will leave it as my final gift to those who enjoyed this tale for four and a half years. Well, for me, it's been almost a year and a half, so you're about there. <laughs> Thank you for reading this extremely complicated story. In the end, what was this all for? If I were to put the answer to that question in one word, it would be entertainment. Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> it's not important if you were able to answer the riddles. After all, if you enjoyed yourself, you won. What is this, elementary school gym class? Ryukishi 07 will continue to challenge you. Oh boy, yeah, you you sure did. <laughs> you sure did. In a different world, which I've already read. Higurashi when they cry ends here, but I hope I get to see you again in a different world. What kind of work do I want to create next? Maybe it's fitting to choose my next work from an infinite number of possibilities while listening to the chorus of the Higurashi. I want to express my gratitude to all the people who have supported me until today. Thank you very much. I look forward to seeing you all again soon. Ryukishi 07. Nice. Okay, so I kind of understand Ryukishi's thought process, at least with Matsuri Bayashi a little, like creating the best possible resolution. Sure. But like... That doesn't change, like, Shion and Kasai randomly showing up. Achievement unlocked, Matsuri Bayashi staff room. Nice. Okay, so now, there's still one more thing that I have to do, which is, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I have to go back through the chapter to where, um, the fragments start. Uh, I should have a comment about that somewhere that I can look up. Um... Can I search my comments? I can search my comments. No, that's by video. Fuck! Um... Do I look through my Matsuri Bayashi playlist? It should be somewhere in my Matsuri Bayashi playlist. <laughs> Just give me a second. View full playlist. I don't think it'd be on episode one. I'm also gonna mute it so it doesn't play back over. Um, interactive, right, save scum. I get a bonus scene if I get them all right and then come back after completing the chapter. Yeah, god, I started Matsuri Bayashi back in July! <laughs> That's insane! Um... That's stuff about Sotsu, um... So do I just go straight back to where it was? Um... I'm... Yeah, um... Okay, I'll... I'll go to the fucking... Wiki. Because that'll probably be faster. Higurashi. 
wiki, and I'm gonna attempt to avoid spoilers. I've gotten pretty good at that with wikis. <laughs> I've gotten pretty good. Control F is a beast, you know? Um, arcs. B -b -b Matsuri Bayashi. B -b 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 That's the anime. List of deaths. Oh no. Secret ending. Okay, if the game was beaten once, one can reach the secret ending by unlocking piece number 52. For this, one must again go to the chapter where the pieces are connected with each other, e.g. by using scenario jump to section connecting pieces, and view them in the following order, i.e. first selecting the top left scene of screen 2, then the top second left screen of screen 3. Uh, in this ending, the conditions for... Oh, boy. Um. Okay, now that... <laughs> that's not something I should read. Um. Okay. I just said I was good at avoiding spoilers. <laughs> Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, uh, connecting fragments. So this should, should it, would it start up immediately, or do I have to click on all the fragments again? Welcome. Welcome to the world of Higurashi Chapter 8 Matsuri Bayashi. In this world, you will be able to recreate the story from Hanyu's point of view. Your objective is to create the June 1983 ideal to you. You will need to collect many different fragments to make that possible. However, Takano's conviction is very strong to overturn, and you will need effort in a lot of fragments. Is this the same? Oh boy, why do I have a Discord notification? <laughs> Kobe knows I'm recording. <laughs> Possibly. Uh, yeah, sure, actually. Yeah. Don't know why I said possibly. Okay. <laughs> I warn you right now, it'll be a slow and painful process. You weren't wrong. Um, I'm pretty sure I already read this. I may surrender. Um, when you feel like surrendering, you can end this game at any time. But if you do, the world's revolving around your friend's fate. So we'll be limited to okay yeah um just like rika did um piece together the fragments there are 50 of them i need to unlock number 52 okay this is the same shit i'm just gonna hold down control was that the same thing and i am one of them are you ready? I'm more than ready. The key to a long journey is not to pressure yourself too hard. Well, let's take it at a light pace. I'll work while drinking my usual wine. Shall we begin? We have all the time in this world. Okay, yeah. Come on. Come on, skip it. Go! Don't fade that slow. You have obtained new fragments. Okay. God damn, we all the way back here. No, I need number 52. Do I have to speed through all of them? Did I fuck it up or something? Okay, which one's number one? Um, one can reach a secret ending by unlocking piece 52. One must again go to the chapter where the pieces are connected and view them in the following order. I.e. first selecting the top left scene of screen two. Wait, top left of screen two? Then the top left top second left scene of screen three. Excuse me. Wait, huh? I'm gonna look it up again, uh, but not through the wiki. Higurashi, Matsure Bayashi, uh, secret ending guide? Um, it's a Steam community guide, which is helpful. Fragment 51 appears after connecting all other fragments. Fragment 52 appears after connecting fragment number 51. Um, it's only important not to break any fragments. It's possible to get this order from reading the fragments in their hints carefully or by using the dependencies graph that's elsewhere. Okay, I guess I have to skip through everything. First, you must have once beaten the game unlocking the and so the shining future achievement after you've done this go back to the connecting fragments chapter now connect the frag you can skip the text by holding control or by pressing s oh really if skip mode isn't working open the config menu and turn on allow skip on red text um okay um i'm going to stop my recording and be back when i figure this shit out burb okay i am back after having destroyed uh the 48 fragments before page 7, and I'm just here, uh, saving, 
these last two won't take very long to, uh, d get rid of. The only one that was, like, particularly long to get rid of was the, um, fucking, what's it called? An Invitation to a Means of an End or whatever, which was, like, the 30-minute one with Nomura. So, yeah. So, 52 should appear as soon as this one's done. But, let's see. Right, because this was the one with Akasaka. It only took me, like, 10 minutes, but still. At least it only felt like 10 minutes. Maybe it was way longer. But I don't remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> bam, 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 bam. He's been never one to fuck up. Ba, 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 ba. <laughs> okay. All right, I forgot there were multiple parts to this one. Okay, we should almost be there. <laughs> almost there. Okay. There it is. Flags from kids' meals. Here we go. I'm going to play outside! A girl's cheerful voice echoed in the house. So, okay, that's probably, uh, Takano. It was a tenement house, so walls were thin. So, of course, her yell carried through to the neighbors. But since it was a child's voice, nobody complained. Miyoko, we're thinking about going to the mall. Her father's voice didn't reach the girl, because all she was thinking about was making a new secret base with her friends in the field. Her father knew the girl had been looking forward to going to the mall, and that if they went without her, she would be upset. He also knew that the girl liked collecting flags from the kids' meals at the restaurant there, and one more would bring her collection to 20 flags. The girl was making a wish on those flags. She believed if she collected 20 of them, she could become happy. Oh well. He supposed he'd bring a flag home as a souvenir. It wouldn't be a big deal. If he asked the waitress, she'd bring one for him. On that day, due to an accident, the trains were running behind schedule. To make up the time lost, drivers were braking a little too late and accelerating a bit too soon. It was rather unsafe. The Tanashi family didn't own a car. They always used the train to go to the mall. As the girl skipped her way to her friend's house, an unfamiliar woman stopped her- oh. <laughs> That's very queer, Rika, but older. Obviously she wasn't from around there. The ties between the neighbors were very tight around there. The girl knew everyone's face. So if there was a stranger, it was either a new mailman or someone who's lost. The woman said to the girl, Do you want to live? Or do you want to die? Any person would think the woman was crazy asking something like that. But the girl was too innocent to think that way. She answered immediately, I want to live! Okay, then go. Your friend isn't home, but go on. She isn't home? The girl couldn't figure out why this woman would know that. As the woman left, the girl stopped her. She was curious, although it was a little scary as to what response she'd get if she answered differently. If I wanna die, then what? You'll get another flag from a kid's meal. Eh? Hey, that's not fair. They're going without me. That's not fair. The girl turned and tried to run back home. Are you sure? You won't regret it? The mysterious woman tried to confirm this. Why would I regret it? I won't tell you. I mean. This seems oddly familiar. Was this in the anime? Hmm... The girl thought this was some kind of a riddle, so she pondered it for a while, but she couldn't figure it out. Then she clapped her hands as if she came to a conclusion. That's okay, then. Why is it okay? Because my parents will be with me. The woman stepped aside. 
The girl bowed to her and ran home. <laughs> okay. She saw her parents locking the door to leave. The girl jumped on them and nagged, nagged them that she wanted to go too. The girl was going to the mall with her family. The family headed to the train station, waited for a train to arrive, and got on it. The driver was feeling the pressure to make up for the delay, and the passengers could tell that from the way he was driving. The girl noticed the unusual swaying of the train. She stood on her knees and looked out the window. Her mother told her to sit down because it was dangerous. The girl stuck her tongue out. Then, the train reached a very big and very sharp curve. The train tilted in that direction and all the people were shoved to the side. They were all squished together and grumbled about it. Then, the train continued to... Well, that's fucking morbid. The girl and her parents came- never mind. The girl and her parents came home under the sky full of stars with shopping bags in their hands. They unlocked the door, turned the lights on, and then the girl put her bags by the front door and ran into her room. She opened her desk drawer, took something out of her pocket, and put it in. She closed the drawer once, but opened it again, and then spread her treasure on the tatami floor. They were the flags of many different countries that came with the kids' meals. The Japanese flag, the American flag, the English flag. Which country was this for? The one with three colors? That's a lot! <laughs> There's a lot of those! She lined them up as she counted. She counted out loud. Then she danced around happily. For she now had 20 of them. It took her so long to collect that many. It was hard work for this girl who was so proud of herself for reaching her goal. She worked so hard that there must be something good waiting for her. She made a wish to become happy if she collected 20 of them. Therefore, something wonderful must be waiting to happen. The girl waited excitedly, but soon realized it wasn't a magic lamp, so no genie would be coming out. Maybe it wouldn't happen that night. Maybe it'd be tomorrow. The girl decided to wait patiently. She accomplished something as great as collecting 20 flags. Surely some wonderful happiness awaited. Surely some wonderful miracle awaited. Or perhaps it might be like a charm, keeping sad misfortunes at bay. The girl put her 20 flags back in the drawer. As she heard her mother tell her to brush her teeth and go to bed, she ran to the bathroom. This is fine, isn't it? It's okay to get a miracle in advance. Hmm, what should I do next? There are plenty of fragments to play with. <laughs> what? You wanna try too? <laughs> it's fun! Makes you feel like God. A world with Satoshi, or a world where the Sonozaki sisters didn't switch. I wonder what a world with Satoko's parents and Rika's parents alive and well would be like. Oh, how about this? Akasaka gets enticed to the enemy's side by Takano. <laughs> that sounds interesting. Personally, I'm curious about a world where Takano is madly in love with Tomatake. It'll be fun to match Keiichi with different girls, too. I love drama very, very much. <laughs> Let's see. What should I do next? I have so many fragments. Hey, do you want some? What kind of world are you going to make? Okay. <laughs> what is this, the introduction to the console arcs? The world of Higurashi When They Cry will move on even without us. There are many dreams, possibilities, and miracles in that world. There are innumerable fragments, all interweaved with one another. I've shown you a small number of those fragments, but it's up to you to play with the rest of them. The world of Higurashi When They Cry is now in your hands. It is a big, full, wide world full of fragments. Near your ears to manipulate your dreams, your possibilities, and your miracles are all yours to discover. 
Thank you for joining me on this four and a half year tale about this world. I thank all those who supported me during this four and a half year tale about this world. I thank all the characters who brought this four and a half year tale about this world to life. I thank my family who have given their understanding for this work. I thank my coworkers who have no effort for the sake of this work. I thank my friends who supported me during the creation of this work. And while I am the same person who created this work, I thank this work itself for the unforgettable four and a half years it's given me. I thank the fact that I've left behind a legacy of the past four and a half years of work. I thank all those people who sent me emails teaching me the joys of production. And if I may leave you with one more piece, I leave you the joy of making a product of your own. I have nothing to show for the four and a half years I spent in college. I simply spent my days without achieving anything. Based. <laughs> Based, I mean, same. Sorry, I left no proof that I was even alive during that time. If you feel that you, the regret for this was what drove me to make this work, then I think we can meet again as friends. That is why I leave you this message. I look forward to the day we meet, my friend. Ryukishi 07. Nice. Okay, well that was... That was silly. I expected it to be like a somber alternate ending, but instead just like, nope, let's fuck around! <laughs> I'm okay with that though, that's fine. Alrighty! I think that was worth 10 minutes of going back through the fragments. For sure. <laughs> now put me on the title screen. Chima no the possibilities of forever. Yeah! Alrighty, well then, I guess that means, at long last, we are done with Higurashi. Technically, because there's still the console arcs. However, we are done with Higurashi proper, and I'm going to make an announcement. Shadow the Hedgehog, I mean, I'm not going to be jumping right into the console arcs. I'm just going to say that. I already said that in the comments of last episode. I think it was last episode, might have been the one before. Uh, but I'm not jumping right into the console arcs. Because, admittedly, I feel kind of burnt out from VNs. I posted about this on my Twitter, too, like, a month ago or something. Saying, like, oh, well, you know, I've been doing a pure VN, like, nonstop, since I started Subahibi in, was it, like, April or May of 2020? And now here we are at the beginning of January 2022. I haven't had a break. Sure. I've had, like, weeks at a time where I haven't uploaded. Like, especially with Matsuri Bayashi. I started this shit back in July. It's taken me half a fucking year. But, even if I wasn't recording, I was still, like, guilting myself a little. Being like, you should record. I know you don't feel like it, but you're never gonna get it done if you don't. And that doesn't mean that I didn't enjoy Matsuri Bayashi. Although, yes, I did say earlier it's my least favorite chapter. That's still true. I think that was funny. This alternate ending. Alternate, I guess. Uh, secret scene. I think that was funny. But... I need a break from VNs. So, although that is the end of this series, what is next, if not just more Higurashi? Console arcs will be coming eventually. I'm gonna make a separate video talking more about... Uh, what I'm gonna do with visual novels. It's not gonna be long, it's gonna be like two minutes, if that. But, yeah, I just want people to know that while I'm not gonna stop doing visual novels altogether, I'm taking a break. I don't know if it'll be a month, two months, three months, half a year. I should be fine by the end of this year. But I don't foresee it hap taking any longer than like three months, but we'll see. Uh, and there's no guarantee either that the next VN I do will just be the console arcs. Uh, I was given a very informative con uh, comment last episode, or maybe two episodes ago. Again, I don't remember which video it was on. Um, about the console arcs, like, generally what some of them are. Like, some of them are more interesting than others. Like, there's one called Taraima Washi, which apparently is not terribly interesting, having already completed the game. But if I'm just gonna do them all anyways, then whatever. Um... We'll see. I'm not sure I will do all of them because, uh, from the little bit that I do know about the console arcs, they go into, like, three categories. There's ones with different characters, there's ones that are, like, alternate versions of Higurashi or just fragments that we haven't really seen, like, oh, this is a fragment where XYZ happens in a different way, a different character goes crazy and does things in a different way, like, oh, wowee. And then the third category is fucking memes. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'll definitely get to the console arcs eventually. If it's not the next pure VN I do, it'll probably be the one after that. 
But who knows, the next Pure VN I do might be fucking like 100 plus episodes. Just like Higurashi was. Or Umineko. But, either way, that means the next game I'm playing in this time slot is not going to be a VN. So what's it going to be? I already said at the end of Demon Slayer, which the finale for also went up today, how convenient, um, that I'm going to be doing Borderlands 2. Uh, so that'll be starting on... That'd be Wednesday the 5th. But that means a second new series will be starting that day too. And it is going to be a game I've been wanting to play since it came out like almost two months ago now. Pokemon Shining Pearl. Hell yeah. I've heard it is a very bog standard remake, but it's probably still worth checking out. And I already bought it, so I might as well. So yeah, that's going to be it for Higurashi proper... If you're only here for Higurashi, I'll see you guys around when I get to the console arcs. And also, another thing, I completely neglected to say this, I still haven't finished Kokonia Phase 1. Um, I think I'm pretty close to the end. I've recorded, like, I think 19 episodes total now. I'm still recording it for when the content embargo's gone. But, yeah, so I'm still technically playing a pure VN on the side. So my break's probably going to start whenever I finish that in my off time. So, yeah. <laughs> Either way, look forward to Borderlands 2 and Pokemon Shining Pearl starting on Wednesday. Thank you all for watching. If you like this series, then be sure to leave a like. And if you didn't like it, then fuck you too. Remember to subscribe, follow me on Twitter, and hit that notification bell to stay up to date on all my videos and stuff. And as always, my name is Godzi, and I will see you all next time. Goodbye! Yeah!